Thanks the Lord tonight. Appreciate you joining us. You that made it out here live on this rainy Wednesday evening. And for you that join us on uh, streaming, we're so glad to have you with us. We just pray that you'll be blessed by the service tonight. That God will touch your heart and your life. And uh, there could be a life-changing moment tonight in a song, in a word, in a testimony, something that would be just what you need tonight. And I'm glad you're with us. I want you to worship with us at the time we come and uh, start the service tonight. Amen. Prayer request now. Still not enough money to put them on the board. Uh, in the name of Ralph and Shirley Wilson, Annie Hambright, Colin Wood, Paul Huffman, Vernon West and his parents, and Helen Parker has been sick, but she's getting better, so thank the Lord for that. Uh, Debbie's sister Pam had surgery this week. Uh, Debbie Brooks, Carol Thomas, Kayla Easton. Susan Lanier, Lois Clark, Cardi Weaver, Brian, uh, Marshall's daughter, Cheryl, been sick. Scott Lanier's brother, Jackie. And Jordan Wilson had his procedure with the kidney stone today, and all that went good. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. And Sister Cat's still recovering from her fall. Remember Debbie and her children, grandchildren, and great grandchildren. Pastor Quinn from Dallas. Pastor Paul and Sister Paul from Morrisburg. Uh, and most bereaved family, Dustin Johnson and Bobby Godfrey. And we thank the Lord for touching Katie Anson. And uh, Debbie Mitchell checks in to her surgery and went good. And Rhonda has received a touch in her back. Thank the Lord for that. Amen. Anyone on this side has a request? We've got the center section. Um, Tommy, I'll remember Faith. She's sick again. She's been sick for almost two weeks now. Uh, Julie took her to the doctor today. She has a, a ear infection and also um, she's wheezing really, really bad. They're going to do some kind of, Julie told me what kind of test it was, but I don't forgot tomorrow on her lungs. So just remember her. She has really, really been sick. Anyone else in the center? Not this side. Uh, Harder? Yeah, mom's uh, doing a lot better. She uh, That medicine they put her on makes her real loopy for that cough. And Rhonda had a had a time with her. Uh, but she got through it, so she's a lot better from that. But she went to the room doctor today at the hospital over there. And they looked at it, and they said, you're doing great. Did you keep up the good work? She said, Lord, you're doing it, not me. Amen. Give it all to him. And uh, he said she was doing real good, and said we'll see you in six more weeks. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord for that. Amen. Sister Cat Wilson has a bone. Remember my brother's uh, wife's family. Her dad passed away. We had that funeral tomorrow. So remember the white family. All right, if you would, stand your feet and let the Lord pray. Brother Donnie, if you would, you would stand in prayer. Father, we just come before you, Lord, tonight, humbly, Lord. Bow our heads, Lord, in prayer. Lord. Ask you to touch all this prayer for us, Lord God, all those on the, on the sheet there, Lord God, and all those spoken through the congregation, Lord. Maybe some unspoken prayer requests tonight, Lord God. Know that you know what's going on, Lord. We ask you to touch them all, Lord God. Lay it at your feet tonight, Lord, and ask you to move. Father, we ask you to anoint the, the service tonight, Lord God, to sing and the preaching, Lord God. All the uplifted hands will be for you, Lord God. Just know you're welcome here tonight, Lord God. We come to praise you, Lord. Come to worship you, Lord. You're welcome here tonight, Lord. We're just going to thank you, Lord, in advance for what you do as we pray.
57 if anybody wants to join in. Amen.
That's right. Judgment 
and was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speakest thou, the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, or if thou, if thou believest with all thine heart that thou mayest, and he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chair to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. I want to talk to you tonight on the subject, don't underestimate the move of God in your life. Amen. Don't underestimate the move of God in your life. You head over there. I might need it. Amen. Had some trouble with my leg this week, and uh, uh, sometimes it's a little hard to walk, but uh, the Lord will take care of us, and I thank you. So the chamber for getting that in case I need it. Amen. Usually don't need it when the anointing's full, and I need it when I'm trying to get to my car after church. Amen. Usually don't need it while the anointing's full, and it just kind of takes care of you. And I pray that you pray for me that I'm anointed tonight. Would you stretch hands and say, Father, we love you tonight. We pray that you touch your servant tonight. Lord, I need your help tonight. More than I need anything, Lord. But I do not ever want to underestimate the move of God in my life, Lord. Just because it don't look like the move of God that I've been taught to believe and receive, Lord. That uh, it, it doesn't look like what it is, Lord. When you move for me and you answer my prayer, I know that I have a move of God in my life. I thank you for it all. I give you all the praise, all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Wait for somebody, shake hands, whatever you'd like to do, and then you can be seated. Amen. Uh, don't underestimate the move of God in your life. I believe we can have one. I believe you can have one. I believe I can have one. It's good to agree with brothers and sisters. And I said Sunday, I like it best when I'm in church with my church family, and we're praising the Lord, worshiping, magnifying God. It's wonderful. Uh, but... Uh, you can have a move of God in your own life, even by yourself. Amen. Amen. You can be on your knees praying and feel God's touch and feel Him answer your prayer. I heard a preacher say one time about a church that he thought was very dry, didn't have much going on in that church. Uh, they would not know a move of God if they had one, was his words. He spoke to me. And this might be true about a lot of us that maybe we wouldn't know it, Move of God if we had one. We just got to recognize him when he comes in. Amen. I'm pretty sure in my mind that I know what a move of God looks like. Amen. If the church was full and people were getting saved and healed and ever serving, I would say that there was really a move of God going on here at Souls Harbor. Well, I can't tell you that's all happening, but I can tell you I believe there is a move of God here at Souls Harbor. Amen. God doing something. Amen. God's up to something, I think, every saying sometime. But I don't think anybody could tell Philip that he was not experiencing a real move of God sitting in the chair with this man giving his heart to the Lord. Or any of the people in the Bible who experienced the move of God when there were just a couple of people there, and or even when they were alone with God by themselves. They got a touch that gives you a move of God. Uh, Jonah had one in the whale's belly when he got right with God. Somebody hear me tonight. Uh, Jacob had one when he wrestled with an angel all night. Elijah found out he could have a roof of God sitting under a juniper tree. When the angel gave him food, he went to strengthen that beat for 40 days. The disciples had one in a storm on Galilee. Paul had one in the bottom of the boat in his storm. Amen. So, uh, that ought to give you hope. If I stop right there, that ought to give you hope. 
that God knows what you're going through. If it matters to you, it matters to Him. She's saying it now. And I believe it does. Amen. And if you're in love with God, as Betty's saying, and He means everything to you, there's nothing that I think He'd rather do in this life than to bless you with a spiritual move in your life. Uh, we carry such big burdens these days, and we have many areas of our life that we need a move of God in. I don't know about you, but I, you know, sometimes I have needed even more than I do now, but I have needed a lot of things in my life and a lot of times in my life when I needed a God to move in a special way. Amen. Amen. Maybe like he had never done before. Amen. Amen. I, I, I believe we have burdens. And like I said, sometimes there have been times in my life when I had a business, I needed a financial touch in my business. The church needed a financial touch. And in my life, I needed a financial touch. There have been times when I had this going on and this going on and that going on. And I just needed God. When I pray, I said, God, you know all these needs I have before you tonight. Sometimes it's not that bad. I'm thankful that it's not always like that. Somebody hear me. Uh, but we do have a lot of, of burdens, a lot of troubles in our life. Amen. I, I believe that. I just feel like uh, that uh, we all got something going on in our life. Amen. And we carry such heavy burdens. I would be glad, and I'm sure you would too, if we could just get a move of God in any of these areas in our life. If there was just something going on in your life that God would move right now, it might be your health. It might be your finances. It might be your spiritual condition. And I could go on all night what it might be, but it doesn't matter what it is. If it's important to you, it's important to God. I've said for years before that song was ever wrote, if it's important to you, it's important to God. And I still believe that. Amen. Amen. I thank God for uh, uh, the, the word that tells us that, that God's with you through everything that we face. Amen. If our son, baby, my son, would get saved. I'm sure baby and I would thank God for a wonderful move of God in our life. Amen. Amen. That would be a move of God. Some of you got lost children. Don't you know if God just reached down and saved one of them, that would be a move of God in your life. You see God moving in your life. When you think about a move of God, just think about an area of your life that, that you really need God to start or that God could start or that you could start thanking God right now for what he's about to do in your life. If you could just see a move right now, what will we do for a move of God? It's important to ask that question. What will we do? Would you be willing? I mean, uh, people ask that about silly things. There's an ice cream commercial that says, what would you do for a Klondike bar? Amen. I'm telling you, I wouldn't do too much other than pay for it. Amen. I wouldn't steal one. I don't want it that bad. But other than pay for it. But... That I, I don't know what I wouldn't do for a move of God in my life. Whatever it would take for God to move in my life, I, I would be willing to do that. Amen. Uh, would you listen to the word of the Lord and obey Him if God spoke to you to do something? Uh, could you just look up to God and, and you know, it's a big statement because you never know what God's thinking about your life. But could you look up to God and say, God, whatever you want me to do, I'll be willing to do it for you. God, if you'll help me, and I'm sure he will if he asks you to do it. Amen. In verse 5 through 12, Philip had been involved in the revival at Samaria. And it was a great success. And people have been looking at that to measure whether they or not they had a move of God or not. I'm sure they would say they did. Because the Bible says unclean spirits were cast out. The sick were healed. Multitudes of people were coming to the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and being baptized. The revival was big news. As soon as they heard about it in Jerusalem, they sent Peter and John to go check it out. You can read this. Amen. It's in the Word of God. Samaria was a place to be spiritually at this time. But look what happened next in verse 26 where we started reading. We see an angel who comes to speak to Philip. This was important. God wanted there to be no doubt that Philip should go south. Physically, we make decisions every day, but there are other times in our life uh, that God wants us to go or do a specific thing, go in a specific direction for him. And we ought to be willing to do that. When we get 
down to these decisions, we have a choice. We can do God's will or we can do something else. Amen. It's our, our choice. We can do God's will. I'll say it again. We can do something else. Amen. It's up to us. Right. Amen. God didn't want Philip to have any doubt about his decision. Amen. What really strikes me, though, is that Philip didn't even ask God, didn't question God. One time in verse 27, says he arose and went. He didn't ask God, what am I going to do when I get there? Would you go south toward Gaza? And I don't know a whole lot about that, but I did read a little bit about it. That Gaza was a desert place. And who would leave a revival down in progress with people getting saved, healed, and delivered? And uh, just want to go out down the desert road to a place called Gaza. Just because God told you to, you better be willing to do that. And I had to. Amen. Amen. He, he could have said, God, we've got a big revival going on here. I, I've got preaching to do to all these people here to minister to. Lord, why should I go down to this desert in the middle of this revival? But that wasn't Philip's attitude at all. God, uh, get our attitude right, and I believe our altitude will change. We'll go closer and further with God when we get the right attitude in our life. Amen. Amen. It was just the opposite. Philip, Philip wanted to follow God's will. That was Philip's commitment to the Lord. If we look uh, at this more closely, these verses I read, we can see that first that God doesn't tell Philip why he wants him to go south along the road to gaze in the desert. God just tells him to do it. And the next thing you hear is, so he went to gaze that He went the way God told him to. Amen. Yes, Lord. That's what you and I have to do in our life. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, God just tells him to do it. It's going to be hot and even deadly to a journey or deadly journey to the south through the desert in the heat of the day, especially on foot. Philip don't question God one time. He doesn't question God's timing or God's direction. Uh, God is sending him. He simply obeyed. There's a lot to be said for that. The thing is, many times God doesn't tell us what the next step is in our life. He just wants us to step out by faith and follow him and go Amen. his way and go what he wants us to do in our life. Amen. When we get there, when we finish what he tells us to do, then we receive the next step. If God says go, you just go. Amen. You do what God said. Worry about what you're going to do when you get there. I've said it for years. I've always wanted God to just speak to me, and he does. But I've always wanted God to speak to me like I read about in the Word of God where it says, And the angel appeared to Philip and give him a word from God. Or the Lord appeared to David. And the Lord, uh, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah several places. It says that. Amen. And uh, one day I was praying. I said, God, I wish I had that kind of relationship like the Old Testament prophets had. You just speak to them and they go. They do what you told them to do. And no questions asked. And, uh, you know, I got to read it real close, and I will never forget reading Jeremiah chapter 18, when God told him to go down to the potter's house. The Bible says in verse 1 that he said, Arise and go down to the potter's house. Amen. I got a word for you there. And said, So I went to the potter's house. I mean, just that simple. When he told you to do it, so I went to the potter's house. I think if we get more willing to do what God wants us to do, uh, then, then, then I think he speak to us more in our life. Amen. Amen. Uh, he simply obeyed. Uh, the thing is, many times God doesn't tell us, like I said, what the next step is. And we'd like for him to, 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 to lay it out. Betty and I still laugh about something that happened when, when Summer was sick. When Summer had the, the kidney failure, uh, Brian was over there. It was time to pay some bills, and she was feeling a little better. And she's telling him, you need to go pay this insurance bill. You need to go do this. Go do that. And uh, then she got, uh, they give her the medicine. She got real groggy, and went off to sleep. And uh, we won't never forget what she told him. He went over, and he said, tell me one more time where that insurance office is at. She said, they'll let you know when you get there. Amen. <laughs> And uh, she was knocked out pretty good. She didn't hardly know what she said. But uh, we talked about that every once in a while. I'll let you know when you get there. Well, 
That's the way God is. He'll let you know when you get there. Amen. Amen. Just go on the gates. Huh? Go on down there. When you get there, I'll tell you what I need you to do. And if we just be that obedient, you know what? We still laugh about it. Brian just looked at her and said, okay. Turn around and walked out the door. I guess you're going to have to. When he got there. But that's the way we all be with God. We ought to be so obedient to God that we be willing to do whatever he says, whenever he says it. When we get there, when we finish what he tells us to do, then we'll receive the next step. God says go, you just go. Amen. Amen. God says go, I'll go. God says wait, Lord, I'll wait. That's the way you ought to be. God does whatever is necessary to instruct uh, and guide believers. He is not limited uh, to our theories or our beliefs or the way we would do it. His way is above our way. He will use whatever is necessary to reach anyone who is truly uh, hungry to know the way of salvation or the way of God or the way God would have you to go. And God seen this in this unit that had been to worship and was on his way home. And uh, he knew he didn't get what he wanted at church. And so God took a man out of revival and sent him many miles down there to meet him. That's what Philip was doing. He made the decision to follow God's boy. He was walking south on a desert road in the heat of the day, just waiting for God's next step. I'm sure he was hoping. I, I wish he'd tell me what to do before I get there. I wish he'd tell me to make a turn to the left or the right. I don't like where I'm headed. God was about to show Philip what was there. In verse 27 and 28 that I read to you, the, the Bible says Philip was just walking as he'd been instructed. And there just so happens to be another man traveling down the same stretch of road in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the day. This was an important man, a man of great authority and influence. And he was in charge of the queen's money. I, 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 I've always thought he was just sitting there by himself. But when I was reading some commentary today, they said he was such an important man in the queen's house that he was probably the number two man and number two person and and uh, said that he probably had a barrage of people with him you know said you probably couldn't just walk up and address this man there'd be people there that was watching over him because he carried money you know and uh, in biblical history it was a large and powerful country Ethiopia it was it was the outer limits of the known world of the Greeks and the Romans, it's just a little bit out of their reach. The eunuch was a very important man, most likely second most important man in the queen's kingdom. This man was someone that God wanted. God wanted this man. God needed him. And this man had, had, had not come to know the Lord at this time, not because of who he was, or how much money he had access to, but because of what he was doing. Yeah. Jeremiah 29 13 says, If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. And God saw this man looking for him. I believe that. God wanted this man because he was seeking God with all of his heart. God wanted this man. How do we know he was seeking? First of all, it tells us that he was in Jerusalem worshiping. He must have been seeking something to travel as Bible scholars say some 1,200 miles to get to the temple in Jerusalem uh, no, uh, now he was on his way home and he was still seeking God he was reading the scriptures the best way I know to show that your hunger for God is getting his word and he was doing that he came from the temple empty handed he didn't get what he wanted Amen. he didn't get what he needed at the church he came to Jerusalem seeking God, seeking hope, something to feel void in his life and the power uh, and in his life that the power and influence that he had wouldn't do for him. It wouldn't work for him. Right. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is the driving force behind Philip taking off to catch up with his chariot. Here he is on this desert. Let me teach a little bit. We'll get back to my subject here tonight. Uh, he's on this desert road waiting for the next instruction. All of a sudden he comes across this man. Maybe a whole group of people, but he's, his eyes focus on this man sitting in a chair reading from the Bible. 
that he's been waiting for and he didn't even know he was waiting for him. The Spirit said go, so he went. The passage uh, the eunuch was reading provided Philip uh, with the perfect opportunity. God led Philip to the right place at the right time to meet a man that God was preparing for this meeting with Philip. The passage of the eunuch was reading was Isaiah 53, verse 7 through 8. says the suffering uh, hood of Jesus Christ. It tells us about that. Jesus would be the uh, substitutionary sacrificial lamb that was slain for our sin. Philip was a Christian. It was his job along with his brothers in Christ to declare Jesus to the world. Christ had given the great commission to go into the world and preach the gospel just as he was leaving. Philip was obedient. He followed God's direction. He was out preaching and running revivals when God spoke to him and he kept following God's direction. He was in Enthusiastic, he ran to overtake the chariot, and now we see that he was ready. Paul tells Timothy, 2 Timothy 4 and 2, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. Amen. And doctrine. Philip was ready to open the scriptures to this man and let God do the work in his life. You read verses 34 and 35, the eunuch asked the prophet, uh, he asked him if the prophet is to, uh, uh, Jer Isaiah is talking about himself or someone, some other man. It was clear to Philip who Isaiah was talking about. Philip took the opportunity to explain the fulfillment of the passage through Jesus Christ. He tells the unit that Isaiah was talking about the center attraction of heaven. Amen. Amen. Uh, what made heaven, heaven. Uh, used to be a song that Jesus will be what makes it heaven for me. Amen. Amen. And the one who was full of glory, the only begotten Son of God, uh, who one day laid aside that glory and came down this old sin cursed world yes. and took on a body like in the simple man, but without sin, suffered at the hands of the ungodly men, beaten, scored, spit upon, humiliated, and died old rugged cross. Somebody hear me. Amen. Isaiah says he was wounded for our transgressions. Yes, he was bruised for our iniquities. Yes, uh, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Uh, God Almighty came and suffered and died for you and me because he loved us that much. Amen. Amen. Jimmy used to like the song that said, because he loved me, uh, he came and died on Calvary. Uh, because he loved me was the name of that song. Hey, he could have called 10,000 angels, but he did. Right. He stayed on that cross so we wouldn't have to go to hell. Real, real simple. Amen. When Jesus came down to this earth, he was despised and rejected. He went through more than we ever will know that we might one day be able to spend eternity in heaven Amen. with him. Amen. Amen. When Philip had explained all this to the eunuch, he found what he'd been looking for. The void in his life had been filled with the love of God. There's only one thing that can fill the void in our life. Only one light that can drive away all the darkness. And his name is Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Philip went from one move of God to another move of God. That's what he did. As I close, I'm telling you, it won't always, you know, the best opportunities will be the one that God puts in front of you. It won't never be the one that you think is so important. Amen. It won't always be what you think it is. And you think, well, I'd do more good over this revival. You get more good out of it, at least momentarily. But you get always get good out of somebody coming to know the Lord. You know, and, and sometimes we just have to wait on that move of God. Paul and Silas beat in shackles and chains, laying in prison at midnight. They sang and prayed and sang praises to God. Amen. And the, the jailhouse shook and it swung open all the doors. And, and uh, you know, you would think, well, he swung those doors open for him. But really the door that was being opened was for the jailer. That he could get saved that night. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. And that was a move of God. I'm telling you, we just don't think when Ananias, when God spoke to him and said, I want you to go see a man named Saul. Uh, you know, I've called him to preach and, uh, you know, he's blind and I want you to lay hands on him. He'll receive his sight and uh, then uh, he'll be healed. And, uh, you know, you know the story. This man kind of, oh God, you know who this is. This is the one throwing all the Christians in jail. You won't be able to lay hands on him. So he went. He just he might have hesitated for a moment, but he went. And he called him a brother. Brother Paul, he said. Brother Saul, was that one he called him that time? He said, uh, the Lord has sent me here. And he knew he was coming. Everything was right. This unit didn't know who was coming. But I believe he thought somebody was coming to help me out here. I need a little help. I'm going home. And I still don't feel the peace of God that they talked about in the church tonight. And I'm going home. And I need somebody to talk to me. Philip was the one. Went from a great move of God to a, another great move of God. Amen. In closing, if we look at verse 40, we see that Philip is found preaching. His work wasn't finished, and neither is ours. Amen. That's right. Amen. Somebody hear me. Amen. Philip was out around preaching in all the towns. And that so test, I believe, was the one he was at. And it says there that that town was some. 30 or 40 miles away. Wouldn't it be something to get caught in the spirit and somebody find you over by Concord or Annapolis or somewhere preaching the gospel? God can do it. He's still a miracle worker. Amen. How are we found today? Are we found complaining or praising? I mean, I go through all these phases. Sometimes I'm complaining. I don't like to admit it, but I do sometimes. And you do too, probably. Amen. 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 Uh, are we complaining? How's it going to find us? Are we praising God for what we have? Are we grumpy? Are we rejoicing? I think that makes all the difference in God speaking to us. Amen. Amen. I mean, I'm just telling you tonight. Amen. If we want to uh, think about it all about ourselves and nothing else matters, and God will let us do that, and He'll pass us by and give somebody else to do it. That's right. That's right. Amen. Are we silent? Or are we witnessing for the Lord? When God, when God speaks to us, we need to obey Him. We need to get on that road whether we know where it's leading or not. Whether we think it's going to the beach or going to the mountains, whether we think it's going to a refreshing place or a desert place, we just need to say, Lord, I'll go. Yes, if it's not the right road, God God will open those doors for us to get us on the right road. Somebody hear me tonight. We saw tonight that Philip's submission and the Spirit's direction and the angel and the voice of God using the scripture to preach to Christ to this Ethiopian who was seeking brought salvation. Nothing better you'll ever give anybody. There used to be a song one year that came out, I think it came out right before Christmas, I remember singing a lot at Christmas, and it, it said, I give you Jesus. Amen. I give you Jesus. You want a present? There ain't no better present ever been given. I give you Jesus. Yes. Are we doing what Philip was doing to see and have a move of God? It's so simple. I mean, I, you know, I've racked my brain. What can we do to get the services going, to get people going, to, to get the power of God working in their life? And, Today it just came across as so simple. Just listen and follow his will. Amen. Do what he wants you to do. That's all there is to it. I, I, I wrote this down and I believe this with all my heart. God is waiting to move in our life. Amen. I believe that. Amen. I believe he saw this opportunity and uh, Philip left there and went down to see this man and got so anointed that he was caught up in the spirit and him preaching 40 miles away. Amen. No telling what God would do if we just yield ourselves to him. We used to sing a chorus around here, Lord, I yield to thee. That's all they want. That's all they want. Lord, if you can use anything, if you can use me. If you yield to him, he can use you. And he can do great mighty things. He said, just call on me and I'll show you great mighty things. 
Jeremiah 33 and 3, that thou knowest not. He knows everything. If we can just shut our eyes to what we know down here and say, God, speak to me. Speak to me. If we'd be like Samuel, just a young boy, when Eli told him, said, and when he went to him three times and said, You've been calling me. I've been hearing you call my name. He said, I haven't called your name. And after about the third time, Eli, being a priest, but uh, getting slack in his duties, kind of took him a little bit. But after the third time, he said, If you hear that voice again, just say, Speak, Lord, thy servant hears thee. Don't you know God love to hear us say that? Just speak, Lord. Speak to my heart. Speak to my mind. Speak to this church. Speak to us tonight. Not a big crowd here tonight, but I don't know how many streaming, but might not be a big crowd there, but if it's just two or three there, a few here, I'm telling you, God knows what we need in our life. And if we just lift our hands tonight and say, God, why don't you just speak to me? Why, God, why don't you just speak to my heart? I need to hear you tonight. I need to hear your voice, Lord. I need to know that I'm doing what you'd have me to do, Lord. And I'll give you all the praise. Ten your feet and say this song. Sing it with me, I'd be with you. I'd not have to go a long way. But if I falter what I'm trying, don't be angry. Let me stay. Cause I'd be with you. Lord, you run all the way. Run all the way. All the way. I'd be with you, Lord, to run.